thanks for joining my opening session of the ELC. Uh, I speak about upstreaming, unique upstreaming. So uh, I'm, part for, I'm part of the Lino uh, Qualcomm, Qualcomm ecosystem team. So we mainly, um, our work is to upstream and maintain uh, Qualcomm SOC in mainline Linux and now Reboot. So our main job is to support and make sure drivers and SOC books boot uh, well on the mainline Linux. Uh, I'm also a maintainer of a multiple subsystem in Linux and U-Boot, so mainly AMLogic SOCs and uh, DRM wide page and panels. And um, I've been fo focused on Linux kernel streaming uh, for like uh, eight, uh, last eight years. So I have a bunch of, bunch of patches in U-Boot and Linux. So a word on Linaro. So Linaro uh, is for the last uh, 14 years uh, has been dedicated to make sure um, uh, the, f the whole uh, open source software is running correctly in ARM SOCs, uh, which is today quite the case. So it's not uh, finished, we're still uh, working on it, and you know, works with companies to make sure product works fine on ARM, uh, on ARM SOCs. So uh, I already did the talk eight years ago, so I basically uh, rebased the talk on today's situation, which is the same, but still different. Uh, if you want to see the slides uh, and the video of my last talk, it's available on the internet, so you could make a diff if you want. <laughs> um, so there's still, there's still notable changes, um, so I'll probably highlight the difference. So the agenda. So it's mainly a set of questions we've answered. I know most of you know the answer, but it's still great to refresh and speak about why upstreaming is important, uh, mainly on Linux and U-Boot. Uh, so the first question, why upstreaming? Uh, why should we do much effort, even if our uh, Linux product is working fine? I mean, so, Yes, we should, and, and before upstreaming, the companies should make sure the code is available, the code is in a Git repo with history, uh, clean code that can build, uh, that can probably generate something bootable, and yeah, it should make sure the code is upstreamable and push the code upstream, and we say it should have an upstream workflow, so it should be the closest possible to mainline Linux. So this is important and not it's not still a norm. It's getting better and better each year, which was not the case eight years ago for a lot of companies, so it's getting better, so it's positive. So there's a plenty of vendors that participate a lot in upstream, so uh, I'm happy to put Qualcomm in the list today because it was not in the list yet, uh, yet eight years ago. Uh, and yeah, I can, cross this image forever now. <laughs> and now I'm happy because I can boot a normal distro on Qualcomm SOC, Qualcomm boards, even the last test, even the, the board I have streamed uh, two months ago, which is great. And yeah, there's a good list of the main uh, vendors that are actually working on main Linux, which is uh, really great. So for the top contributors, you can see the list of companies I just listed, and Linaro is in the, in the top for the 6.8. Um, mainly you can see the Linaro employees, which I, I highlighted, and you can see uh, other employees of the, these main SOC vendors who actively work towards having a good maintenance support for the for ARM SOC which is really great and much better than eight years ago. So what companies does upstreaming? I mean, because it's not only SOC vendors who does the work. There's also IP vendors, uh, service companies like Lino, uh, Daily, Benicon Mix, or, or Collabora, or Bootlin. Uh, there's ODM, board makers, and distributions. 
book journal, like uh, called, uh, Red Hat, uh, SUSE, and so on. Uh, so it's a, a whole ecosystem, and every company should participate because it impacts every, every part of the chain completely. So for the SFC members, it's uh, quite complex because the costs are really high to actually make an SOC. Uh, they've lo lo got a lot of legal issues to actually uh, make the documentation public, especially for IPs they buy. Uh, so mainly the IP vendor doesn't, are not very collaborative on this side, so it's the main problem. Um, but there's a lot of SOC members that really participate, like ST, who actually start upstreaming with public members years before announcing the product. I mean, for the last MP2, they started upstreaming like three or four years ago. They just announced a few months ago the, the SOC. Uh, and so they had a full upstream chain when announcing the product. So it's, it's really super awesome. So it's a good example, a very good example. Uh, the whole industry should actually follow. Um, but they have a lot of customers, a lot of products, like the, the most is the smartphones. When you have a smartphones that are sell at multi-million devices, you can't randomly change the kernel, so you have a stable kernels, and somehow all kernels when they start the product. Uh, so there's still some synchronization with uh, mainland kernel, so in the last years, uh, we've seen a lot of synchronization of the last LTS kernel, so probably the GKI, GKI uh, strategy, which probably uh, forces the vendors to use the last, STA, last, STA, last LTS uh, for the new SOCs. So it's still better than using the old uh, 3.x kernels when we had eight years ago. Uh, the IP vendors are part of the, of the ecosystem and they almost never upstream. So we have some upstreaming from Cadence and Synopsys, uh, which is really limited when you see the catalog. I mean, they only maintain like two or three IPs and they have like, they have like thousands of IPs. Uh, and they often make a lot of money on drivers actually, so they don't really care about upstreaming because it's a lot loss of money. And most of the IPs, you can directly communicate with it. It's often behind firmwares or, or often the register interface is different because it's part of the, uh, the integration to, have a, to define the, um, the register interface. So it's particularly true for video decoders, for example, where it's starting to change now uh, because uh, it's important to have correct video decoding and the IP vendors starting to participate in the streaming. So it's a, it's a good change. Uh, board makers try to participate, but they focus mainly on making the board and trying to help customers using the board with the whole capacity of the board. and. It's not easy for them to use uh, mainland Linux, which has less features. It's hard to sell, it's hard to, to explain to the customer. Uh, so there's still, there's still a lot of upstreaming from them to, to at least support the board uh, with the actual SOC support in the mainline. Um, and yeah, sometimes the uh, ODM don't provide the kernel source because they only provide the Android build. So. It's quite it's like in the middle, uh, when you make a board and sell boards, uh, it's not easy to, to upstream, but yeah, it's possible. I mean, we had uh, like a Libre Computer, which does full mainlining from the beginning. So for them, we can boot Debian, Red, or, or any Red Hat distribution directly on the board without any, uh, any change. So it's possible, I mean, uh, you can do this. So why it is so important after all? So the, the will question is here. So the m why it's important, it's mainly for new features. So you don't have to redevelop everything each time and try to backport zillions of patches. 
but the most important feature at the, uh, are the bug fix, the security fixes, fixes and the security features. Uh, and we see today it's the three last points are the most important. Uh, we should really make sure the, the Linux product we have run with the latest stable kernels because we find a lot of bug fixes and security fixes and this should be the priority of the Linux vendor. So today the situation has really changed. Most of the product use up-to-date, the base of up-to-date uh, stable release. So this should be really important. But the, the new features uh, should be also uh, really important because the way we manage the features, the way we handle the, the devices, we get enhancements every day on mainland Linux. And you can really have performance enhancements uh, when using uh, an up-to-date mainland kernel. So even if you're not okay, I mean, you should upstream code. It's, it's simple as that. And not only Linux, any, any open source uh, project. So I know making a product is complex enough. I mean, we, we all know uh, it can take years before having a, a stable product uh, on a Linux or any, any kernel, in fact. So why upstreaming it? So um, code maintenance, mainly. Uh, fair return, because you, you use a product which I was, that, that was developed for the last uh, 25, no, 30 years. Um, and if you want to make sure the Linux platform, the Linux project is still alive in a few years, you need to make, make sure it's still alive, so you need to participate in it. Uh, so unlike eight years ago, we have now a product running very close to mainline Linux, which was wasn't, wasn't, wasn't not the case eight years ago. So it's, uh, it's good. We need, to, we need to, to think about it. Um, we can now run near mainline or mainline on uh, products we can buy. So this is great. Uh, so for the code, man code maintenance, uh, when, you, uh, when you develop Linux, when you maintain Linux, you are constantly trying to optimize, rework, and change the API. It's not to make uh, people uh, angry. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> it's really to make sure uh, we remove dead code, we remove outdated code, and things that don't work anymore or that are too complex to make sure uh, we can add a new driver support. And, and when you have your code mainline, you will be part of the, of the process. You will have your API uh, change uh, done automatically. It's part of the, of the design. Uh, and when you update your kernel, you don't, don't, want, don't want need to test every single release to make sure your driver still works. It will simply build, and you only need to test it works, actually. Uh, and you only have to have a proper uh, CI test suite to test every kernel release. Uh, to make sure your drivers still work on the platform. Because without this, you will need to test a lot more and revise manually and uh, check manually if you use a white API. So just you gain time and you gain money uh, doing, doing that. So for that, you need to have a, a good upstream workflow. Uh, and having a good upstream workflow can really optimize how you actually handle your, your uh, upstream and uh, downstream code. Uh, you can have multiple ways to, man to maintain your, your BSPs based on main Linux. So yeah, the old one is to have a BSP tree which is based on an old kernel and you almost never synchronize. Uh, you can have a, um, a way where you regularly revise on the latest LTS and the other way is to actually rebase at each version and to have a really close as possible as mainline because you, all, you always have some downstream, downstream changes. It's part of the, you cannot, you cannot upstream everything. It's impossible. You still have some changes, some tweaks, some uh, product and specific changes you can upstream. So 
if you upstream most as possible, you will still need to rebase each every release, but it will lower your 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 work. So this is the classic fashion uh, where BSPs are handled. So you basically you have a, a vendor a BSP tree that uh, is based on the old kernel, and it will always stay on this old kernel, probably based on the stable kernel. But uh, you all they most of the vendors only take a new kernel uh, when you have they have a new feature, for example, and they never rebase the old BSP but still maintains mutable versions. This is the basic way uh, of doing this. Uh, it's, it works because you have a stable BSP, uh, but the problem is at each time you start a new version of the BSP, you need to revise a lot of stuff because there's a lot of difference between the two uh, major kernel versions. Uh, and you will still need to backport features between the branches and uh, you will have a kind of lot of work to make sure the features are, are, are correctly balanced be between the versions. So this is the most optimal uh, way to, to maintain the BSP, uh, is to have uh, a BSP that is always close to the latest uh, stable version, for example. And the, the, to make this workflow work, you need actually to push almost everything upstream, and only keep the downstream change as minimal. So you have the closest possible to the kernel, uh, and with this, you can have uh, really a clean and uh, easy to port uh, BSP. Uh, the problem is you need to maintain a, a separate team for upstreaming. You cannot, do, you cannot mix the team that develop the BSP and maintain the main line, so I mean, there's plenty of ways to organize your, ma your mainline workflow in your product, uh, but this is mainly the most op optimal way. So how long does it take to upstream code? I mean, it can be easy, <laughs> but yeah, it's complex. There is no easy answers, and it's not only on Linux. It's only it's on all, I mean, open source projects. Uh, most of the maintainers are not paid, uh, or it's only in fact part-time. So you cannot have a consistent time to mainline, um, uh, time to mainline. And you need to understand correctly the development cycle of, of all projects, and like Linux as well. And you need to be able to easily rework and refactor the code to make sure you're got upstream because some of the, the contributors don't understand they need to rework their code. They need, they need to match the maintainer's way to maintain the code and to organize the code. And depending on the subsystem, uh, it can be long, it can be short, it can be complex. Uh, some, some maintainers will tell you, oh, okay, I merge it, you send me another patch to fix this. Some maintainers will take like three years because I will check every single line. So it depends on the maintainer of the subsystem and the actually driver you, 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 you submit. So uh, for example, when you have a huge changes that affect multiple uh, subsystems, for example, the main workflow is to push simple patches after one hour to make sure uh, it goes in the right subsystem and match the correct uh, maintainer's view. And the idea is to, at the end of the streaming, you push an atomic patch set that enables the feature, which is spread among the kernel. So it is mainly true when you have uh, uh, SOC support, when you have DT, DT will be the atomic last uh, commit when everything else is merged. So there is no really methodology, a method documented to do that. Uh, and you need to know the maintainers, you need to know uh, people, you need to discuss with them to understand which is the most optimal way to push your code uh, upstream. 
so time to mainline, uh, it can be long. Uh, and when it's done in one release, it's awesome. It's rare, but uh, you can do it. Uh, when you push the initial platform support, it can be very frustrating because there's a lot of dependencies. Uh, you push code almost uh, on over multiple subsystems. So you need to be prepared to have a failure and wait two or three releases to have code merged. For the merge delays, so the main reasons you can have to have delays, so the most, the, the number one is uh, code style. Uh, and code style, because code style is really dependent of the subsystem. I mean, <laughs> between the network and the uh, like input, you have different code style. Uh, you don't use the same uh, variable. You don't organize the same way uh, the variables are ordered. Uh, the ordering of the in include are different between DRM and network and input and so on. You need, to <laughs> you need a lot of experience to, to pre prepare your code to match the subsystem style. And you can even have uh, contradictory uh, reviews. So <laughs> you need to balance between both reviews and take the um, better one. Or, yeah. So it's a lot of work and there's a lot of knowledge to know. Um, there's bindings, uh, bindings that need to be cleaned and tested. Uh, this is new, this is new, like the few, a few years ago. Now it's mandatory you know, to have uh, correct uh, bindings um, which are tested and uh, you need to have your device tree which has no more, uh, which is fully tested against bindings to be merged. So it's not a hard requirement, requirement yet because we're still in the process of cleaning the device trees, the bindings. It will happen on some day. Um, the merge delays can be dependencies on headers and binding headers. Uh, for example, uh, the DT and the code doesn't go in the same tree. So if you have like clock drivers with bindings and headers, uh, you will ever need to have both maintainers within DT and clock to make a common tree or wait two releases to have the clock merge first and the DT merge after So it depends which SOC you're targeting, if the maintainer of the DT is active or not, if it, he, he knows the clock, correctly the clock maintainer, if he's able to make shared tree or not. And sometimes you part of the, you, you, you push code between a, a, a rework. So this is the worst situation, like you, there's a work like uh, on a clock subsystem or whatever, and you try to push on your driver and you need to match somehow in the middle of the, tra the transition and you need to heavily use the Linux next, for example, because you have the final uh, work which is done and you need, yeah, so it's quite complex. And one of the last issue is posting code too, too early is not reviewed or too late. So you need to push at the right time, and some maintainers are really picky about that. Not after, not not before RC one, not before after RC RC RC, RC four for review. So you need a lot. There is need a lot of experience to understand the complexity of uh, the maintainers' uh, point of view. So for the delays, for example, uh, for the for the SOC for the basic SOC. You need almost two, two or three kernel versions to, to have something merge. For a simple driver, uh, it can be a few weeks. And for the more complex driver, like a, a Joe driver, a DRM driver, it can be one or two months if there is enough reviewers uh, and the maintainer is active. Uh, but yeah. We should be prepared to have to iterate over multiple versions and rework the code a lot. Uh, for info, I, I, I tried to push um, a touch screen driver. It took me uh, almost one year to get merged. But yeah, so I'm, I'm experienced, but yeah, I didn't know the input system. And 
took me a lot of time, too much time. I had to send 15 versions of the patch set. And it was fully reviewed at the third version, but it took like 12 revisions to patch the, the maintainer's uh, point of view. So it can be complex, and even for experienced developers. So for the simple less SOC, like for a network, uh, network platform, it can be like for one person, it can be like six to nine months, like one year to have something correctly working in mainline. But if we need, we need to upstream something for something uh, SOC very complex, with video, with bus scaling, with uh, DSPs and security, the minimal one year and a half to multiple years. I mean, for Qualcomm SOC, we've been doing it for like 10, 10 years, and some SOC are not complete yet. Because you said some piece of hardware are we, that's so complex, it's hard to fit, and we need to add new uh, subsystems to handle the, the features. So a practical example. Uh, one example is uh, what I pushed uh, this uh, the end of last year. So I pushed support for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 SOC. Uh, so I posted all the patches the uh, day of the official announcement. Uh, the patches, uh, I, I spent six months to prepare the patches. Uh, so they were ready uh, the, day, the day of the announcement and 90% were pushed were merged for 6.8. So 90% uh, means uh, I had a boot to display in Linux master at 6.8. Uh, because I knew uh, the state, uh, because the state of the Qualcomm upstream was so good, I was able to split my patch set in plenty of pieces and I was able to atomically uh, end the, with DT. So everything was, there was almost no dependency. The, the only two dependencies was uh, for the clock bindings, the clock header, and the interconnect header. But uh, since we know the, the, the interconnect maintainer did a shared tree, and since the, the clock maintainer is the same as the DT maintainer, it was done by itself, so <laughs> it was simpler. But yeah, we were that, we were that I had to wait uh, another cycle only for clock and inter interconnect. And then I developed some features in between. And 90% of the new patches were also merged. And for 6.9, I'll, I'll, I'll have uh, uh, USB-C alt mode working, uh, GPU, no, GPU, not, not yet GPU, uh, all the DSP and audio working. So. You can expect when you have a correct uh, ecosystem around you for not only a code, but also reviewers and maintainers, you can expect 90% uh, of your patches to be merged, but you need them to be correctly prepared uh, to match the, what expected for the, from the reviewers and the, main, the maintainers. Because I expect they often, they, the maintainers that apply patches do not actually participate to the review. So they need the patches to be fully reviewed and correctly in the good state at the end of the, before the main July. Like RC, at almost uh, between RC5 and RC6, RC6, they need to have the patches prepared. They need to be, they need to be correctly, they need, they need to apply on the tree uh, perfectly. And often then they don't like to, they, don't, they won't wait for a new version to be uh, applied. So, uh, so the question is: uh, All Linux ports, uh, how hard is it to upstream? Uh, like, if you have a very old, uh, old, uh, old uh, support. So, when you start from a really, really old best port, like uh, 3.2 or 2.6, I mean, I've gone from there. Uh, it's different. I mean, at the time, we had almost anything for ARM. Everything for was like Intel related. You had, the only generic stuff was uh, like UART, basically. <laughs> uh, 
So now uh, you have everything to support a modern SOC. Uh, you have pin control, GPIO, uh, reset, DRM, SOC, a, a, a SOC for audio. And now you even can even validate the base tree. So it's, it's like magic. You can validate and test almost everything that can fit in subsystems, in frameworks. So it's a game changer and most of the code can be uh, removed and you only need to add uh, small bits to match the, the subsystem. So yes, it's hard, even for trained professionals. Uh, I've been doing Linux, many Linux for like 15 years and I still, I still have some, I still do some errors, I still do some typos. I still need to send 15 uh, <laughs> versions of the patch, patch set to be merged. <laughs> so, but you're not alone. I mean, there's plenty of professionals that can help you, uh, like for training. Oh, sorry, I put free electrons. It's not free electrons anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> I should fix it. It's bootlin now. I still have the old name in, in my head. So. You can be helped by training by Linux experts. There's a lot of small companies and big companies that can help you. Uh, they actively participate to the upstream community in U-Boot and Mainline. And you can work with community. Uh, I mean, they, a lot are open to discussions. They have a lot of RRC channels. Uh, you can have some, you have some new communities like, like the one from Post Macatoet that use metrics. And there's a lot of discussions. So it's an open, uh, it's, it's kind of open. There's a lot of open community to discuss. And I mean, yeah, so it's, it's, you're not alone. And what about the benefits? I mean, because your boss will need to have these answers. <laughs> so the benefits, uh, code quality, uh, maintenance cost, mainly, uh, fastest, uh, I didn't add it, fast, fastest um, code to mainline uh, um, time. Uh, you can you can use the open source strategy. I mean, if you have an open source strategy, something you can market actually. It's now, today, it's um, something you can say to people and it's something valuable. Uh, customers uh, will somehow prefer uh, a company that has a clear uh, open source strategy, a clear upstream strategy. Uh, and some markets, some, some markets uh, only uses mainline or really close to mainline. So um, if you, have, you want to make some products in IoT, for example, some big customer only take mainline or really close to mainline uh, SOC, uh, associates. And you can also hire uh, talented developers. I mean, some companies hire good developers because they have an active and very good strategy on, on open source. And finally, money. I mean, it will cost less at the end. So. <laughs> The main, the main argument is money. Uh, you can reduce the long-term R&D cost, and you can have great talents. So it's two big arguments. So uh, thank you for listening. Um, if you have some questions, I'd be happy to answer. Um, you can reach out uh, to my team and my team and uh, me and myself on IRC. Uh, I'm also on Mastodon, and you can visit Linero.org if you have some some questions on Linero. Thank you. Don't have questions. I mean, can can finish now. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, I was maybe too much negative, but yeah, if you, I was really focused on SOC support, and and if you only target uh, drivers on some subsystems, you can iterate really easily. If you, if you need to be prepared and you have you need to have code correctly formatted and tested, yeah. So if you have a corrected formatted and tested code, it can really go fast and iterate only in one many only many. Someone, sometimes only one version of the patch would go, and it's most of the time. So it was, yeah, I agree with you. I was maybe a little bit negative, and um, I'm sorry about that. <laughs>